Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, I'm going to be talking about <coughs> how to control uh, electronic world and robotics with the Node.js. Uh, I have some. I just made some experience with it. Uh, it's a, It's kind of like a. There is no and there is no way to do one some magical library to everything in your life. Like a, you know, it's always be like a complex. You have to do some your own stuff to in order to make some things work. So it's kind of uh, different, but it's working nicely. So uh, just uh, briefly, I'm gonna uh, basically I have to talk about. Uh, Node.js and electronics and robotics next to do. So, uh, you know, Node.js is just released uh, very recent times ago. It's not that re recent, but it is just a new guy. Uh, and it's doing only, uh, you know, a JavaScript engine and it's working nicely. So, about Node.js. I'm going to say, uh, I think most of the people know it's using a Chrome 8 engine and doing some uh, lightweight and efficient stuff. So it's also using NPM. NPM depends on the Node.js. If you want to use it, you have to use the NPM. Without it, it's not going to work. If you want to install, it's pretty much easy. One single command line, it's going to uh, work out. And and the one things I like it, there's a documentation about every single release, every single change. It's make it easier to understand everything on the website too. So it's really really useful to use that part, and I like it. So. Uh, if you want to use uh, Node.js, there's also uh, the other ways you can install it, like uh, you can use some version control, you can compile from your source, but in Fedora way, you can just install with uh, DNF2, if you like so. Uh, but uh, in, as a version, they are using uh, the long-term version too, not the latest stable version, so it's uh, kind of like a not a bleeding edge version, it's just like more like a you know, long-term supporting version, but well, it's <laughs> working fine. As it looks like it. So about the electronics. Uh, as I said before, uh, electronics and robotics is kind of like uh, always with. Uh, if you're building something at your own, it's always going to be uh, custom. So if you just follow some sort of uh, article about it, it's going to be like a, a general way. But this is only work for that uh, system, machine, or automation, auto whatever you're building on it. Uh, in my previous job, I was working on. Uh, industrial level protocols and also building an electronic card. So that also give me some time to test kind of such a things, which is good to be have some extra uh, experience and an extra hardware in my in under my hand, and I can do some more testing. And I like it. Uh, well, there is a several way you can connect your hardware with your system, with your Node.js, with your main machine. Or you can, if you use some sort of a embedded card of machine, you can also connect the same way what you did. So at first, I think probably most people, if you're using uh, Arduino or electronics, they know the SPI and IC2 and serial port is the first way you can connect with them with the Node.js, and it's very easy. You just have to use uh, NP as NPM. Uh, and you can use some serial port, and it's just gonna connect it. Uh, or you can just directly use uh, from your system, there's a slash tail part, there's a serial connection if you have the proper driver on your kernel, it'll work and it's going to just give you the connection between your system and your embedded card inside of Node.js and it's working nicely. Well, about the speed, uh, sometimes it, it's become struggling. I mean, like a, if you have some sort of a multiple machines, like a 20 or 25 machines on, on your system, it's become like a problem because uh, that so many machines wants to request with the, and communicate with the uh, no, Node.js and it's sometimes uh, stuck uh, at the connection. Well, if you don't want to, uh, I use, I has to use, and I just suggest one of my friends also suggests me use an asynchron part and it's make it, make it easier. And as a, as a web server, and, and web server connection is also other way, which is nicely, but if you try to send, send something from your, even your uh, cable connection under seconds, it's always dropped the package and uh, I don't know if it's gonna be reliable on that, but if you do something uh, in real time, always use some sort of a cable connection other than web server, because it's never do the way I want to do it. But it's still a good way. As an industrial way, I said, I was use Modbus and BACnet protocol, which is a building automation system protocols. It's also usable on the mod, uh, in the Node.js, 
the basic very basic is there is some sort of a uh, <laughs> register list and register and write list and read list as a protocol and if you want to connect something in your industrial level uh, system you have to use that register list and you can connect it with your Node.js which is the one of the basics as a circuits and boards as I said you can use any kind of Arduino, your embedded cards, and if you want to communicate with them, you can use Node.js. As a microchip, uh, it has to be used some sort of a code inside of the microchip, then you can use it. And you can also use Node.js on OpenWRT devices, which is recently I found it out and I found how to compile it. It's, uh, the only problem is you have to use external, uh, external hardware, sorry, external hard disk, then you can install because it's too big. <coughs> uh, as an IC2 and SPI, it uh, uh, also depend on the address list, and it's also uh, uh, you have to know which uh, chip and which hardware you have inside of under your hand needs to know uh, which connection needs to which where. Then you can communicate with them because if you don't know the address list, uh, you can connect it. And the good part is about the SPI and also IC2, you can use multiple connection in the same line if you just like you have a one single cable straight line from the one coming out from your motherboard or your embedded card you can connect multiple machine if just give the address number you can connect with them and you can control with them which is a good stuff we can also use as a multiplexer or something different like that and if you know the each address as I said we can determine it and change it I mean is it neat as a, a determining is also when I try to say is uh, because there is no general libraries for each single uh, vendors or manufacturers that does give you the same address list or there is no kind of, a, as I said, magical library what you do uh, and connection so you have to know the list and type it on and then you can connect it because sometimes if you just find some sort of a very rare chip and don't know what is in there, you're gonna probably need to know the data sheet. If you don't have data sheet, you can probably cannot even connect it because electronics is also depend on a documentation that they give you from the manufacturer. If you don't have that uh, documentation, you can't do that, which just sucks. Uh, as an exemplary, I made some, uh, in the end of the slide I will show it, I, will, I made some of my own uh, robotics uh, projects the devices I tried to use, uh, I was I used the IC2 chip, which is the chip is as an exemplary. There is an uh, NPM for it. It just only works that chip, nothing else. It's uh, as I said, there is no general library. So that chip has a 16 channel, a 32, uh, 12 bit PVM driver. You can just control multiple uh, 16 server motors or anything you want to use as a PVM signals and if you know how does it work and need some soldering definitely and it's working very very fast and rapidly and the good thing is you can actually multiply uh, up to 999 devices with the single line just bottom up to the multiple chip if you solder it and it'll work uh, 999 device in the single line if you just connect it to your motor system and if you just type the code it'll work which is the good part of the IC2 um, about IC2 about a little some basics as you can see you just need to require the you know the command you need and you can just call it out and make the address make the frequency and you just when you get the code all you have to do is if you want to send the pulse which channel you want to use and which length and which duty cycle as a PVM signal in electronics uh, term and you can control it which is very very easy I guess for that chip if you know how to control it I mean uh, it's kinda uh, sometimes uh, you, you need to know what's the duty cycle and you have to calculate that uh, but when you, when, you, when you have that it's gonna be much easier after that you just need to find that first then you're gonna be okay most likely uh, serial port is also another way which is I'm using that a lot for my own project because it's too easy I mean if you want to connect something with the USB device just serial port is the way what we do because we like the, the USBs and we now have to connect it and the way is just need to install the driver 
and have the you know address which is in the Linux system in the federal app, we have slash the under there and when we connect it we can get the information we want so and we can use of it as it right now I have my devices connected to Bluetooth and it's using the ser serial connection and we just get the information I need and I can control it so for this serial port it's actually good thing is there's a, a command line too so you can actually check which port is available and accessible so before the connecting that you will have to do some scanning before the coding stuff so it's going to give you some nice information before that as a quick start and it's actually good because you don't want to search every single time where is that where is that so it's nice to have that serial command line for the, for the trust stuff and if you want to use it uh, it's really very simple we just need to know bound rate and addresses in the in your computer or your embedded card and you can get the information and make sure you have a permission because sometimes it's asking for root permission in the M every single embedded card or you have to create some special group and you have to be in the group as a user then you can control it which is one of the basics <coughs> uh, as a web server uh, as I said before you can still connect and talk multiple devices on the internet if they have an internet or Wi-Fi whatever they have or it can be even a broadband uh, it also can be used as a general web device and website okay internet uh, is a good way to building some sort of a cloud up cloud application or optimization application infrastructures I mean if you want to build some your own uh, you know smart house project you can use that too which is nice but uh, it's also, as I said, depend on which project we want to use it. And as a, there's so many different ways to do that. You can use the libraries also already in there with the HTTP, or you can use a different, like an Express, which is also very popular and very simple than HTTP, as I understand, because it's just more shorter than what we do. And as an example, this is the HTTP way. We have to do the connection, port number, and when you connect it, it's going to give you a result. And if you run it, you just connect to, just, just point your finger there, you're going to see this little head headline, and if, if you have a, want to debug it, you're going to see the console log too. But as an express, it's that's all. It's just, that's all. You just need the library, and it's going to make shorter. But the difference is, you're going to have to install external library, then you can have the connection and create the same idea as I did just before. It just, as I said, <coughs> different. Same, you just need to find the port address, and you can also uh, specify the IP address or host name, or it's depend on your you know, uh, connection system. You know, it's so changeable. I mean, as I said, there is no general way to explain that as a it's just not that. You, there is a millions way you can do that, which is nicely. Okay, so there is a couple, uh, a couple of uh, hardware. Sorry, a couple of libraries using uh, for connecting multiple electronic device as a general way, but it just work on that specific device, and uh, the way what we do is only support that way which is, uh, some of them is uh, like a cyclone and a Johnny Five, which is also other way to do that and, and a lot of it. Okay, as a cyclone way, uh, if you, you want to use cyclone, you can install cyclone.js and there's a tons of uh, supporting, which is awesome. It's going to allow you to control a Bluetooth, BeagleBone, Raspberry Pi, keyboard, joystick, mouse, um, I don't know if you like to uh, have drawn you can use that too and it's really really neatly documented and it's updating too and I like it it's very nice uh, there is uh, some little example I have I can show you right now which is not that problem and if we if I can then try it <coughs> Oh. 
sorry, I have to start my services. Seems to be need to talk. Okay, now it's working. Uh, why is it not working? Yep, it should work. Okay. okay, I'm gonna check it after after that. Maybe I can try it later. I don't I don't know lose time, but I don't know why is it happened. I should work. Let me try one more time. <coughs> yep, I made this this. Oh, maybe. Okay, now I have it. Yeah. <coughs> and can I bring this screen right there? No, I have to just make a smaller screen. So, uh, I have one device is allow me to control uh, if you are, I'm working basically with the robotics hands. So if I want to control something with my hands, so I need some sort of a special camera plus an IR, some sort of a height, I need to know my height is. So the basic idea is, uh, if I can bring the screen, yep. So if I just put my hand, yeah, this is the point. If I want to control it, and okay, sorry, I put that there. I just, uh, yeah, it's nicely, I can, I can even, all my bones and stuff is there, which is nice, uh, but, uh, see, needs. Oh, I, I did it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's the main idea. I have to close it because I'm just go back there. <coughs> okay, I have to exit from my presentation. Sorry for that. So, okay. So that's the one of the example how I did it, and other ways like a industrial ways. Let me try it. Uh, as I said, industrial ways is most likely these two protocols is doing all the industrial building automations as I see, as I ever see. Uh, there is also one more protocol, but I never ever see it as a Node.js. I never even try it before. But these two is most likely do my i mean, basically all my jobs. In the others, I have to use uh, the other language, so no problem for that, but it is, it is. So, uh, this is uh, Modbus and Backnet is using, as I said, industrial. It's not new, and I made some spell wrong, sorry for that. And it's really fast and really, really reliable. Uh, it's easy, but the problem is when you're starting in the first time about the industrial level connection, it's kind of hard to learn it because you need some time to understand the address and stuff like that, which is kind of pain. Uh, Modbus is old. It's using for a long time. Uh, it's more like a basic device, like a, if you have a sensor, counters, something like that, you can use of it. But uh, as a backend protocol, all I see is I always need some extra space in my device because if you're using some sort of a small chips, it's maybe gonna be insufficient as a space space because it needs so many protocols need to be supported. So if you want to just use some limited support, you can probably use it. But if you want to support everything, so that's your way to need it. You need more space. Um, as in robotics, uh, we have as I said, awesome projects. As I saw, Cyclone, Dronify, and Gort. Uh, this story is, as a general usage, I used uh, Cyclone and also some of my stuff I just showed earlier as a serial port. And this is uh, kind of like, we can say, the most general 
uh, library uh, I found it, but it's m all of them is most likely focused on Arduino devices. Uh, but if you want to make your own devices supported, you can do that too, because the library is not that uh, horrible or not that complex. You just need to know which uh, port is which, then you can probably configure it for your own usage and you can use it very nicely. Uh, this, three, this two is just based on how to use your devices as a library and control it. Gort is like a uh, just, you know, find device, install and just command directly. It's no, it's like a uh, quick command line controlling, which is uh, compatible with all of the this in the top. And it's also other projects like our Ruby based and Go language. This is the Go language, this is the Ruby language, as far as I remember. So, uh, uh, I'm going to have to show you one of my devices. I made it. It's not in here because of my airport doesn't allow me to do that. This is the devices I use it. And I'm going to show it just a second later, or just a minute later. And I said that I think because my, I think I mixed up some simple presentation mistakes. I'm sorry for that. So it's also, as I said, based on, I think I just meant that, that too, because as I said, it's based on Arduino and Raspberry Pi. You can control so many devices, like a, a different device which is pre-mated, uh, pre and you can uh, control it. You can make your own control algorithm, simple, well documented. And now I can show you what I did in my house in Turkey and how I control it, most likely. <coughs> Okay, let me try it. Okay. Yep, and that will work. Okay, uh, it's uh, my one of my testing times. So when I completed, I was working fully. So uh, it it's still same sensitivity I had. I used Raspberry Pi with and plus some IC2 protocol. Okay, this is my simple uh, project. I made it. I used a different device and different way which is uh, working nicely and I use the device in my hand which is the this is gonna be the white just a color difference okay so let me show it if I can okay so as I see I connected my computer is there everything is gonna be uh, not yes I has to calculate that so as you can see all I did is okay the other two is disabled because I, as I said, I was, I was building, so the complete one is like this, but as I said, I didn't bring it. I'm sorry. It, this is the video I found, the most recent one. So it was working. I, do it, I did almost <coughs> all the movements. So the basic is you have to control all the finger, all the muscles. I have to calculate it, which is it's a freaking six months. <laughs> So I talked with some of my mathematics teachers to do that too because I need to s learn some special algorithm and it's take a huge line of code. Uh, it's almost complete. I'm gonna share it on the GitHub. Uh, so everyone wants to do that same device I have. They can build it itself or they can change it, use it. It's up to them. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm pretty much, I think, done. So if you have any questions on stuff, I, okay, I can get it. If not, I'm, I'm done with my presentation. And how do you calculate that? Uh, uh, sure, let me tell it. Uh, there's an 8 EMG control device, which is the electromyography, which is uh, get your uh, muscle pulses. So when you get the pulses, you get some just on the numbers. So the numbers is depend on which part of your body in your in this particular part is is uh, moving. If you just 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 release your hand completely, it's going to show you 25, 20 EMG signals per second, per millisecond. Because 
if you are not doing you are not doing anything then your blood line is so your blood is still moving so this is the what you get it but if you try to move something like this it is going to give you higher result and if you have more sensitive uh, device like a more EMGs so you can separate each fingers like this so in my case i have 6 sorry 8 i have to separate them the eight pieces to find each finger which is the highest point and calculate them which my maximum and minimum I just then I become to do the general usage for every single hand in this room or other in the world so when you do this you will understand this is finger the high up and it's gonna be if I remember second and the five EMG is depend on one of my first finger and the others one depend on the others fingers so this is how this works so the trick the trick is Okay, when you move your all of your finger, so let's say if I start all of them, so it's gonna it's all of it's higher, but still there's a little trick algorithm. It's just separate them and which one is moving or which one is not. So it's kind of like a elimination and find the proper way to calculate it. So there is a as I said, I cannot just say this is the way. This is in the in the, end of my, in the beginning of my talk, as I said, it's always gonna be some sort of an extra customization, such like this. <coughs> okay, uh, anything? Anything else? I think. No. So, why did you choose uh, to put. Uh, why not choose to use visual sensors? So, set up three video cameras and then uh, kind of use those to figure out positions. And, and then uh, camera is my first way. As I show it, this is the device to do that for me but I want to do wirelessly, which is one of my project was. So they asked me to do wirelessly, and I just did it wirelessly. And it's the idea I come up, and because I also want to, want to test something else, and as you said, I can do that too. I can do that the other way, or other way, or other way. There's no single way, yes, but I can do that too, no problem. Anything else? Mm. Um, which one works better? Uh, okay. If you have some rock solid configuration, uh, this this is okay. But the camera one, if you separate every skeleton part, this is that that's better. It's more sensitive. And if for this one, you need more EMG to separate them. And I know one of the university working really really hard on that. They didn't come to the end of the conclusion yet. They spent uh, almost three million uh, three million dollars more. Uh, so it's not easy, but I don't have that resource they have. So they are using more EMC, more sensitive device, and they try to do without camera. And it's going to be actual working prototype, uh, which is one of the human is doing his arm, the same idea I did. When I just almost finished this, I watched the video, they did that, and it kind of sucks to see that before what I did, but I respect that. They have more resources, so that's all I can say. But they are actually using one of the human to control his hands. He does sorry. He doesn't have an arm. Just put the he just put the arm, the robotic arm, to his uh, place right here, and he's using one of them, so two of them, on his right there, which is a little bit extra surgery, and it's working. It's actually he can he actually even drive a car in a real world. So I think it's pretty much a success. I can say. And are there any reliability? I mean, there are cases where people want to handle dangerous things or dangerous... Oh, they are probably using special libraries and special countermeasures for that, so it's not going to be general libraries or something like that. But, but they in your experience, any bugs or things work pretty smoothly? Uh, okay. <coughs> the only problem I encountered is... Sorry, there are several problems I encountered. One of them is, in the first time, is the timing. Because when I use IC2 or, or serial port, I have to find out which one's the fastest way because the problem is for this project you have to be a real time because you know when I started moving it has to start at the same time moving which is back in the video so the point is I have to find some exactly timing problem this is the first problem the second is the algorithm which are between your arm and between your robotic arms find which movement is which so the the last one is the Bluetooth it has to be used Bluetooth 4 and lower level energy, and I have to understand between the protocols what is in there. Thankfully, they share the source code. So it's becoming easier. <coughs> Other than us? Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's gonna be in my GitOps. Uh, probably, uh, uh, I have to update it first, so everyone can download and do what they want to do with that. You can use uh, even like uh, for normal desktop controlling, like a media control. You can do or other stuff uh, like a robotics store. It's all the way out working nicely. How do we find it? Hmm? Oh, sorry. Let me show it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me open up in here. Let me just write down your GitHub username. Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. My github.com slash my username. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put it up, I'm going to put it up. It's okay. I'm going to put it up, just give me a sec. I, I have connected internet. Give me a sec. And there's paper, that's what I was looking for. Hmm? Traditional paper might be faster. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> I, I just connected, so I already I got there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Ah. Right there. This is the link. Uh, I'm gonna upload it as a vlog 2016, and all the stuff I did is gonna be in there when I open up the actual repository, become private to public. So, yeah. <coughs> Sorry for that. I didn't finish up the the presentation in the it was the typing there, so I forget that. Sorry for that. <coughs> mm, okay. Anything else? Okay then. Thank you for coming and thank you for listening.